the manned submersible Nautil is being turned into an advanced photographic platform. Heading up the effort is oceanographer Paul Mathias. He outfits Nautil with high resolution cameras and powerful deep sea lights. Pictures of the stern wreckage will be fed into this tiny sphere and stored on computers designed for the mission. We are about to try something that's never been tried before. Very exciting. Nautil now begins her long trip to Titanic. A voyage that will take her crew to one of the most inhospitable environments on Earth. Temperatures are freezing. The water pressure is bone crushing. All that will protect her crew is a four inch thick titanium shell. Nautil and Magellan are now underway on an historic mission. It's hoped their photographic reconnaissance will add a new chapter to understanding the Titanic disaster. In the past, ships have vanished and it was walk away and leave it because there was nothing could be done. Now we have the technology to visit these wrecks, look at them in detail, and to understand why they failed and why they were lost. We're going to presume that you'll be coming in on the bow on the starboard side. Aboard Ocean right. Voyager, Obviously, scientists meet with the Magellan team That's to plan their start. search for the actual iceberg Same damage. Uh, coming in to the side shell. So we want Bill Garski is a naval architect and a leader in the field of marine forensics. David Livingstone works for Harland and Wolf, the shipbuilding firm that constructed Titanic. There is a potential uh, entry into the hull. Uh, These men want to find and photograph a section of the damage that doomed the ship. When Titanic's bow struck the ocean floor, it plowed up sediment concealing the deadly iceberg damage under a mound of mud. In 1996, scientists used sonar to peer through the silt. Their data suggest that the iceberg caused a series of thin slits that flooded and sank Titanic. Today, investigators wonder if part of the fatal damage might not be buried in the mud. In fact, it might be visible to the naked eye. I think if we can find some exposed surface of the ship that was not in contact with the sediment, perhaps, and I say that perhaps, we may find the iceberg damage that the ship sustained. Before they can begin looking, the pilots must fly Magellan to Titanic's bow. A risky endeavor. Roger that, heading down. As the ROV approaches the bottom, it pauses to check its tethering system for tangles. Uh, it's settling out, things are getting safer. Another 20 meters, 090, Bruce. More than two miles of cable floats freely through the deep sea. This is more than enough to get snared on any wreckage at the site. Moved uh, 50 meters, 280, Roger. Stand by, Bruce. 
We are a tethered vehicle. We go all the way from the surface to the vehicle on the bottom. Obviously, we do not want to get that tether fouled. And the uh, Titanic is a major fouling obstacle. After several hours, Magellan reaches the sea floor. You're looking at bottom right there. The landscape is desolate, barren. Somewhere in the darkness lies a colossal structure, once four city blocks long and more than 100 feet high. 12 foot dead ahead, something's real close. There's the wreck. All right, six feet off, come on up. Don't get closer. Watch your verticals. Titanic's bow is a haunting sight. Surprisingly elegant, despite its destruction. Troy, nice job aiming those lights. I did that. The Magellan team runs the cameras through a series of system checks before they begin searching for the iceberg damage. Hey, Abel, how we doing? You're all right down there? Or? No. Yeah, we're cool. Okay, so Livingstone and Garski test the skills of the Magellan pilots. In order to find what they're looking for, they fly dangerously close to the wreck. It doesn't actually look like this. It's, uh, it they head to a spot where one survivor claimed he saw damage nearly a century ago. On the night of the disaster, deep below the luxurious accommodations, survivor Frederick Barrett is working in Titanic's boiler rooms. Barrett helps stoke the boilers, which supply steam power to the engines. After Titanic hits the iceberg, chaos erupts in the boiler rooms. Barrett is among those who struggle to save the ship. Barrett sees water jetting in two feet above the floor grate in boiler room six. An hour later, he's forced to abandon an adjacent boiler room. A large volume of water came through. All at once, I saw a, a wave of foam come tearing through between the boilers, and I jumped for the escape ladder. Leading fireman, Frederick Barrett. Patiently, the team slowly combs the outside of the wreck, looking for the damage Barrett saw from inside. To pinpoint Barrett's location, the team drops down the starboard side of the ship, counting hull plates and portholes as they descend. Yeah, let me, uh, I'm still trying to go down. Am I clear on the left? This is the only way to find the exact area described by Barrett. With every second, uh, Magellan gets work. closer to the target destination. If they can find the damage, it will be the cornerstone of their investigation. After hours of searching, Bill Garski spots something in the encrusted wreckage. It's four o'clock in the morning. Okay, is this the opening you're talking about? Yeah, almost right on the mud line, there's something that looked like an open seam. Hidden near the mud is a tiny opening in Titanic's side. Yeah, yep. Yeah, that's an open seam. You're kidding. It yeah, is? See the room? Sure 